While it may seem like life is dormant during winter, you can still spot activity right at your feet. Rock. Dr. Melina Cozanitas is a postdoctoral researcher who studies fire, plant pathogens, and mycology. She often lends her time and expertise on fungi to students and mushroom enthusiasts alike. Uh, the top. Turn it upside down. Yeah. I feel it's important to educate people about fungi because Fungi have really gotten a bad rap in Western culture. Uh, we're taught to be really fearful of mushrooms as kids. Another reason it's important for me to share information about fungi is to help people realize how much diversity is out there. And this goes for plants and animals too. We are more likely to want to protect something if we know that it exists and we have some kind of personal connection to it. On a foggy morning, Melina led a group of Sonoma State University students and naturalists on a guided mushroom blitz, where they collected and identified a variety of fungi at Osborne Preserve in Pengrove, a piece of land managed by the Center for Environmental Inquiry out of Sonoma State. For the past four years, we have come to this preserve and to another preserve that the center manages to do a snapshot in time uh, blitz of the fungi that are growing on the preserve. And the purpose of this is that if we track which species we find each year in different weather patterns, we can see how they change um, over time. During this year's Blitz, the group discovered greater fungal diversity than expected, thanks to the early season rains Sonoma County received. The main reason winter is the prime time for spotting mushrooms is because that's when the part of the organism that's visible to us, the mushroom, makes its appearance. The mushrooms we see in winter are the fruiting body of a larger organism that's existing underground. And the reason that we see these fruiting bodies in the winter in California is because we have ample rainfall to allow these mushrooms to produce their fruit. Mushrooms themselves are made up of filaments or thread-like strands of hyphae that weave together to form the mushroom body. The same thing is happening underground. These hyphae will weave together to form what we call a mycelium. And that mycelium makes up the main body of the organism. And it can extend for miles. So when you're picking a mushroom, all you're doing is picking the fruit. As long as you take care to not disturb any of the mycelium underground, you're not harming the organism. In fact, mushrooms want to be picked. They want their spores to be dispersed. So I noticed that the ground was pushed up a little bit here. And when I move the dirt away, we call that a shrump. So it's a mushroom hump, I guess. So this is the one that takes people out every year. So this is Amanita phylloides, the death cap. The death cap is California's most notable poisonous mushroom. Although safe to touch and smell, the death cap causes severe poisonings each year, some deadly, when people misidentify and then eat them. Does it smell? Yeah, it smells like rotting potatoes. They stink. Oh my god. Yeah, so they smell really bad. Oh! Death what? cap. Death cap. death cap. But that oh. all, so now smell the fresh one. Oh, that one is an old one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. It still has that smell, it's just not as pungent. It's like a degree of rottenness. Kind yeah. Of. Okay. But even when it's fresh, they still have kind of a little stink. Just put it here. No, oh. go ahead. It's, it's <laughs> it it won't fit. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's carry on. People are continually asking me if it's safe to handle mushrooms. And it is completely safe. Even a death cap is safe to handle. It's really only harmful if it's ingested. One way we identify mushrooms is by taste. And so we'll often take a little nibble of the cap to see if it has a bitter or um, spicy or acrid reaction. 
and then spit it out. While it's safe to taste a mushroom without ingesting it, trying it under the guidance of an expert will ensure you're doing so in a safe way. Nibble it for a couple seconds. Is it like the emetic or how it makes your mouth? Yeah. Better? Keep it at the tip of your tongue, the back of your teeth. Nibble it up really good. Macerate it up really good. Keep going, keep going. And then spit it out. And it's only when it hits your stomach acid, right? That's when it's really like... Yeah, you have to ingest the, a poisonous mushroom. And these aren't poisonous anyway, so. You can actually eat it. Yeah. Uh, this is lactarious. Spicy. So I thought it was once they touched your stomach acid that you could get sick, but it's deeper down in your digestive system, like in the liver and stuff. That's what uh, Melina was saying. So yeah. That's like a good point too, about like being able to taste it too, mm -hmm. is because of that whole hands-off issue. Yeah. I've even been told when I started getting into mycology, people were saying, are you gonna wear gloves? Be really mm -hmm. careful, like don't yeah. pick anything, don't you touch don't anything. Don't even smell things even. Right, yeah. and that's the way that you learn, where human beings were meant to learn hand in a hands-on way, in a mm -hmm. hands-on environment. And so when you don't have that, that's going to produce that fear in people as a society, as a culture. Yeah. So being in an environment where you're encouraged to do it in a safe way mm -hmm. and you're told the steps like what you shouldn't do, what you should do, what you can do, um, kind of opens up and invites you into that world that you wouldn't necessarily have that invitation to otherwise and wouldn't have that insight. I think part of mushrooms is being able to share and mm -hmm. Melina's really big on sharing knowledge and so we're like yeah. let's go learn from her and then tell more people so we're yeah. going to share what we learned here with Especially people. something that's so like mushrooms that is so clicky right. and like right. it's so nice to be able to teach this entire group about mushrooms and then like the like there's so many things that we learned today mm -hmm. that yeah. yeah it's not common knowledge unfortunately it yeah. should mm -hmm. be because we all live mm -hmm. out here but yeah. it's on us to share it. If you are curious about hunting for mushrooms, there are several steps you should take before venturing out for the first time. Check the regulations in an area before you go, just so you don't end up with a fine. Always double check to make sure that what you have is what you think you have. Um, it's a good idea when you're getting started to check every mushroom if you're in a patch, because you could have one sneak in there that could make you sick. Familiarize yourself with any look-alikes, and it's always a good idea to confirm with an expert. There's a lot of great online resources. iNaturalist is a great place to post photos of mushrooms that you find and have experts come in and identify them for you. MycoWeb is a great place for California fungi. And again, cross-reference with the guidebooks and have fun. Okay, everybody say death cap. Death cap. <laughs>